Seven, there's a new flashlight that claims it works by using water. That's right, water, plain old H2O. It's called the Hydrolite. The maker claims this new water-activated technology will revolutionize how you charge a flashlight. Kurt Aaron is here to find out, does it really work? It's one of those universal stories, because John and I were arguing in the weather office, it's a power to save. I said, no, it's, it doesn't really work, because <laughs> <laughs> it works off of water. It doesn't work off of batteries. So we want to know, does the Hydrolite really work? This is the Hydrolite. The maker claims it's the flashlight of the future. It runs on water, not batteries. How? The water-activated hydrocell contains commonplace alloy and other eco-friendly elements. They can be stored dry prior to initial use for more than 25 years. Simply hydrate with water and it will instantly produce a steady flow of electrical current. Unlike batteries, the power output remains constant throughout the lifetime of the cell. Also, it works on any kind of water, regular, distilled, even salt water. But does it really work? To find out, we've asked a few familiar faces here at WNEP-TV to help us out. Newswatch 16's Jessica Albert and Pennsylvania Outdoor Life host Don Jacobs. Right off the bat, Jake has some concerns. It's way too big. Way too big. Why? Are you going to put that in a backpack? Does it fit in a glove compartment of a car? In fact, even the drawer that I keep little flashlights like this in my kitchen, okay. that probably wouldn't fit in. Now, he is bringing up a really good point. And also, if I break down and I'm nowhere near water, how does this work? Pee on it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, if that's what it needs to save my life, I'll do it. We do understand, Jake. But to be fair, most people will have access to water outdoors. Instead of finding new batteries for a traditional flashlight, that'll be a little more challenging. We start our test by reading the instructions and dipping the hydrocell into the water. Next, we go into one of our studios and compare the hydrolite with a traditional flashlight, mag light, and atomic beam. What a difference. Not a good one either. The hydrolite was so dim, we had a hard time seeing it on camera. We point it towards the floor and compare the lights, and there's no question. The hydrolite is much weaker than a traditional light and not nearly as good as the atomic beam. Would you guys pay $29.99 for this light? How much is this one? I'd buy this one. That one was $15. <laughs> okay, so no. No. <laughs> and we agree with Jessica. And finally, the maker claims one charge will last 100 hours or more. Jake leaves the light on his desk and comes back the next day. It is out. It only lasted 27 hours. We give it thumbs down. Yeah, we really put this to the test. Uh, something that was uh, a little tricky to tell in that video, when you saw the video where we were comparing and you had the two beams, the, there was a third beam. That was the hydrolite that was above those two beams. It was so dim you couldn't even see it. Now, Scott, you've been shining it around the studio here. Your thoughts on the, on the brightness of that light? Yeah, it isn't very bright. No. no not at all. And there's one LED light in the middle, uh, and it does pop up. If you pull that top, if you pull that top up and then press the, press the button to turn it on, yes, we thought, well, maybe this as some ambient lighting, but even that in the package that you saw with Jess and Don, mm -hmm. we were using that as ambient light. It wasn't very bright at all. All right. So. Thanks, we had Kurt. such high hopes, Kurt. Mm -hmm. Well, that'll do it.